Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I'm talking about volume number one of Tsuyoshi Fujitaka's light novel series, My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World. Full disclosure right up front, I was sent this novel by J Novel Club, which is a relatively new company that is doing official translations of light novels into English. Aside from the free book, nothing else was exchanged hands, and this is purely my opinion for the rest of the review. Now in this novel, our main character, Uichi, basically is dealing with two major problems. First of all, his big sister, Mutsuko, is a chunibiyu, which means that she has middle school syndrome. Essentially to Mutsuko, because science hasn't definitively proven that aliens don't exist, there won't be a zombie apocalypse, that there aren't really monsters, because of that, she believes all of these things are not only possible, but even probable. And so she's dedicated herself to preparing for any of these particular outcomes. And for Yuichi, of course, this is incredibly embarrassing. But what's even stranger is the day before high school, he wakes up and he realizes that he now sees labels above people's heads. Now, initially it seems fairly benign. His family is labeled, you know, mom, dad, big sister, little sister. Even when he first arrives at school the next day, things seem fairly straight ahead. Classmate, friend, peer. But then he gets into his classroom and his classmates start introducing themselves. And as they do the labels start to change. Suddenly, there's a witch, vampire, zombie, and as if those weren't bad enough, one person says serial killer. Now this novel right off the bat pretty much throws a whole lot of stuff in the pot. It is a supernatural story, of course, with Yuichi having supernatural abilities and potentially vampires, witches, zombies, all this kind of thing. It is a high school battle because there are fights. You know, there's a couple of different fight scenes in the book. It, of course, has some harem elements because, well, you know, what's a story in high school that has some romantic comedy and supernatural and fights? We've got to have some pretty girls. So it kind of throws a whole lot together. And it could be a mess. It really could. But instead, it actually turns out to be a really fun, light read. Um, I think what really sells the whole thing is the characters. So we'll start with Yuichi himself. Now, Yuichi's kind of a funny character because he is the very, you know, good-hearted, decent guy. We see that, you know, sort of a vanilla character all the time in these type of things. But what makes him somewhat unique is that he is kind of inverted to what he should be if he were, say, a real person. See, Yuichi has been trained how to fight by Mutsuko because, of course, she believes all this crazy stuff is going to happen. He should think that the fact that he can fight is pretty awesome. But instead, he's incredibly embarrassed by it. He thinks it's horrible that he's learned these things because of this embarrassing older sister of his. On the flip side, there are certain family situations that I don't want to spoil because it's, it's funny when it happens, but there are certain family situations that you would any high school boy would be completely horrified by and embarrassed. And yet, he just absolutely has no problem with it whatsoever. And what's really funny about all of this is that this abnormality about him and about his family in general is most noted by a character who is a vampire. So, even though... This person is a vampire and part of this sort of otherworldly existence. They are probably the most level-headed, normal person in the whole story. And then, of course, we have Mutsuko herself, who 
initially we get the idea could be just a really flighty, obsessed with manga type girl. And yet, as the book goes on, there's definite hints that there's a lot more to her than what we're initially being told. And again, I don't want to spoil it, and I think potentially these are things that are going to become story elements later on in the series. But there is definitely a lot more to her character than just being obsessed with these, you know, storylines and these potential apocalypses and monsters and everything else. The writing is pretty easy to follow. I mean, in fact, I would say that it's in some ways a little bit better than some other light novels, just because, and I don't know if this is the author or if J Novel Club did this as part of the translation, I'm not too sure, but it probably has more use of speech tags than I've seen in a lot of other light novels. And even when the speech tags aren't used, the way that the dialogue is intermixed with the action and describing what a character is doing and everything else, it makes it very clear who's talking pretty much all the time, which is a great thing because there are some light novels where you have like half a page of dialogue and you're really not sure who's saying what throughout most of it. While I can't speak to the accuracy of the translation, I will say that it is done in such a way that the book reads very easily. There are the odd little error here and there in terms of grammar or, you know, the odd word that maybe could have been switched. But I wouldn't say that it's any more so than what we see in like a Yenon or it's probably actually a little bit better than the One Piece releases of the Rising of the Shield hero. So in terms of being a relatively newcomer to the English translation market, J Novel Club is, based on this volume, I thought they did a really good job. In fact, um, I was a little hesitant because they were a new company. I didn't know how things would read. I didn't know how the translation would feel. But based on this, I'm actually looking forward to reading some more of their stuff and uh, seeing how the rest of their books are. In general, My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World is not going to be for everybody. And it is probably not the greatest thing to introduce to a non-light novel reader. But if you are willing to accept that something that is completely sort of off the wall, a little bit zany, but pretty much works because of how the characters react to everything that's going on. I think it's definitely worth a read. Certainly if you're looking for something like if you've been inundated with something really heavy or been reading some heavier type stuff and you're just looking for something that is just fun that isn't going to push the gray matter too hard, this is the perfect book that you should pick up. I I was actually surprised. I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would and pretty much raced through it a lot faster than I thought I would. So those are my thoughts on My si Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World. Again, thank you to J Novel Club for providing me a copy to read. Um, it really helped me out. You know, I've been talking about how finances have been a little tight trying to keep up with all the books that are coming out. So it was pretty awesome to be able to read something completely new from a new company I wasn't familiar with. And uh, I really did actually end up enjoying it. So that was pretty awesome. So for my next review, I've gotten myself a copy of volume number one of Goblin Slayer. Uh, this one, I think, is most notable because the manga has already started to come out and it is apparently uber violent. In fact, uh, one of you was telling me that you found it almost disturbing uh, with some of the stuff that was happening. So we'll see what the light novel's like and see if it follows suit. So thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all of my future light novel reviews. I do have links to my older light novels. And don't forget, I don't just read books. I like to write them too. I've got links as well. So thanks very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye for now.